Day six on the lamb. I'm managing to stay ahead of Wada. I sleep by day, travel by night, eat what I can find. Wish I packed underwear. I know in my last bit I said I was going to go into macronutrients, but in my research I found something that was far more important, so it's going to have to wait. I suppose the dietitians are going to get vexed, but they can just take a ticket and get in line. When you're looking at how to improve your glandular function, I think that these concepts give greater bang for your buck, and considering I could get terminated any day now, I'm going to go with these first. Let me try and use muscles as the analogy for glands and see where that takes us. Glands produce hormones like muscles produce strength. Now what I'm saying here isn't Western scientific, but let's be honest, I burned that bridge a few weeks ago. Western scientific has spent its time analysing the mechanism and function of the glands rather than the individual's control and manipulation of them. And that's because, by and large, they think that the glands are under the control of the autonomic nervous system, so we have no conscious control over them. I'll beg to differ on that one, but I'll do it in another video. But in the meantime, here's an analogy. The sliding filament theory was proposed in the early 50s by Huxley to explain muscle contraction. But there were jack dudes going back thousands of years. You don't have to be able to understand and analyse a mechanism to be able to improve it. You just need to be able to observe trial and error. Bros were getting jacked before blokes donned lab coats. And there are those in the East that have been manipulating and controlling their endocrine response for centuries. And just because we don't understand it, doesn't mean it doesn't happen. So, the basic rules of muscle strength. To produce more strength, you need overload, recovery, and building materials, i.e. protein. Now, there are lots of different ways to achieve this, but these are the basics. This concept's captured nicely in that Wheel of Pain scene in Conan the Barbarian. He starts off as a child on one of many pushing this wheel. As years go by, they all die. He's the only one left. He's progressively taken the extra workload, rested at night, and either they fed him a lot of Metrex, or he's eaten the other slaves on the wheel. Either way, he's Conan. So, how do you Conanize your glands? How do you get them stronger and more efficient? And if they're not handling normal life, how do you get them healthier? Well, for the first two, we need an overload, recovery, and building materials. And for the third, we need balance and an increased maximal capacity. If you have a muscle that struggles to handle ordinary life, how do you improve it? Well, you need to ensure its balance and then you need to increase its maximal capacity. Life is a percentage of max. Increasing your max makes life easier. Now, taking the same principle, I'm going to cover as many glands as possible in this vid and do the rest if, when, I broadcast again. Mm. So let's go. The adrenal glands. The stimulus for the adrenals is stress. Fight or flight, that makes them fire. Psychological, chemical, physical, they're all stresses. Now most people have lots of stress, but do they have a purposefully controlled overload and recovery, and is their maximal capacity high enough to deal with ordinary life? Now how do you get purposeful overload and recovery for the glands? The adrenal glands will burn out if there's pretty much the same stimulus all the time and no recovery. Drip feed stress, whatever it is, will wear them out, just like Chinese water torture. Now many feel they can't reduce their stress. Job, money, kids, etc. You can, it's all in your psychology. Check out my Dealing With Disappointments video. But if you've got drip feed stress with a good perspective, but you want to improve it further, then you have to create a controlled, greater stress for a short period and then rest off that. That is training not exercise. Exercise is doing something for a period of time because you believe there's some benefit in the future. Training is a structured plan with an intended goal in the future. Doing strength and fitness training where the goal is to get stronger and fitter is a concentrated stress that demands a recovery. But you have to do the recovery. Focus training requires focus recovery. Training stimulates the sympathetic nervous system. You have to be as good at stimulating the parasympathetic nervous system. You need to do the meditation to build the mystic muscle. You need to do the breathing exercises so you can breathe easy. And depending on your particular biology, you may have to do more working out on the parasympathetic side than the sympathetic side. 
But doing both sides means that your capacity to handle stress increases. And the low level stress of your day, which is a percentage of your maximal strength, becomes easier to handle. Right, uh, number 32, number 32? Ah, the dietitians. Let's put a smile on that face. If you train, you can eat a high natural carb diet, which will take you out of glycogen starvation, which is hardwired to produce an adrenal response. This will calm and rest your adrenals. If you then start craving more protein and fat, that just means that your body's got rid of one limiting factor, glycogen, and is now dealing with the next limiting factor, i.e. muscle repair or organ rebuild. So adrenals, train well, rest well. The next gland up is a thyroid, the fat stripper, the blubber burner, the adipose annihilate. They found me.